All right, that's connected. Um, and then I go. All right, that takes me live. Can I get just somebody to just double check? Somebody does net, uh, double check Discord. Somebody does uh, double check uh, YouTube. <clears throat> I think I mentioned last time we've already got our first students testing positive with COVID this fall. So um, it's time to get the recording stuff working and stop piddling around. Um, okay. And then that should be. Oh, let me get away from that. Okay. All right. We got some echo. Okay. Alrighty, um, cool, cool. So what I'm going to do is let me drop in. Oh, hang on. Um, all right, so I just dropped the um stream now out on youtube um let me see is there an echo on that yeah the two the two personas uh that are on the general chat can you mute if you're in the classroom can you mute your um mute yourselves on discord that would be Brendan and Branscom. Thank you. Waiting on you, Brendan. What's that? Maybe it's not you. Do you have like a yellow duck or something as your icon? Then it's different Brendan. Okay, Brendan, Brad, Brendan. Mute yourself. Correct, Brendan. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. So as far as I can tell, I should be YouTube streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow, this is all amazing technology. Such a great thing. Okay, here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> First thing we're going to do is take 10 minutes. And this is your quest, okay? Actually, your first quest is to sign the role. There you go. Thank you. Um, that's quest number one. Um, quest number two, I want you to, you, we can look at this a little bit. The problem is there are, what is that? Three, six, 12, 24, 24 logical fallacies. Tim sent a thing out, which I really liked as a bit of food for thought. It was pretty low, low impact. <clears throat> the The biggest thing I didn't like about it was, um, I mean, I like the robot theme. Because you got to pick something that's at least halfway neutral, like whether robots should take over the world. What are your arguments, right? But what I want to do, but the biggest problem I had was that most of the examples were just so, so like tiny and simple and bite size that you didn't, you couldn't really tell the subtlety, you know? And so what I want to do today is almost like a combo current event. And I thought about this just half an hour ago, Tim. So let's make this happen. I want to have one of the current events basically just be a logical fallacy current event specifically targeted. And I just, like I said, we haven't had this conversation before, but basically uh, where you've got to go find some other article, but you've got your post, your paragraph has to be about a logical fallacy that you find in somebody's argument about something. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't care when. Could be this week, could be next week, but coming up soon enough before everything fades. Would that be kind of cool? Something a little more directed? So um, here's what I kind of came up with. <clears throat> and if I do this right, I should be able to control at least a little bit. 
Let me see. Um, is my mouse, there's my mouse, yeah. Okay, when you mouse over these, so what I'd like you to do is, is um, if you have your phone or laptop, you can go to yourlogicalfallacyis.com. And I know we're generally, we're laptop free zone. Today we are not, today we're gonna pop that open for, for right now for this exercise. <clears throat> so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna just sort of show you examples of these and we have, let me see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. We got twenty-seven right now. So uh, we got about one per each of these. So I'm actually gonna roll through and and like count off by number. So you're gonna be assigned one of these logical fallacies. But like for example, remember we talked about straw man? Last time, I think just Tuesday, we didn't we talk about straw man, straw dummy on Tuesday, right? So there it is. Upper left-hand corner is the straw man misrepresenting. Um, oh, come on. It's hard to do that from an angle. Um, yeah, misrepresenting someone's argument to make it easier to attack. That's kind of a high level. Then if you click on it, It'll take you to a bit of a, uh, you know, by exaggerating, misrepresenting, or just completely fabricating someone's argument. It's a lot easier to present your own position as being reasonable, right? But this kind of dishonesty serves to undermine honest, rational debate, which is kind of central to the things we're trying to talk about. Example, after Will said that we should put more money into health and education, Warren responded by saying that he was surprised that Will hates our country so much that he wants to leave it defenseless by cutting military spending. See Carlson, comma, Tucker, or see Maddow, comma, Rachel. I mean, if you pick your, pick your perspective, right? There's a lot of this that goes on, okay? So, um, And et cetera. Well, we can also just kind of go left to right through these, okay? And there's the gambler's fallacy. I'm not fluent at all of these. Appeal to authority, proof by authority, composition, division, genetic, blah, blah, blah. Um, so if I do this right, let me see. Can you tell me when I've, when I've deleted the proper amount? I can't see the words. Da. How'd I do? Not too bad. No, the problem is I can. It's I. It's, it's not replicated here. I'm not mirrored. Okay. There's a bunch of stuff going on over here. Um, okay. So what we're gonna do is. Um, I'm gonna just start on this side and just and count out one to 24 because there's 24 options. And then while we do this, um, I'll try to, and then you'll, you'll know to go to the site, go to that particular one, okay? And then what I want you to do for the next five or 10 minutes is jump online, just scour the world, just try to find, not by searching for like straw man arguments by Tucker Carlson, I want you to just go and and spend a little bit of time trying to just find an argument somewhere that that whatever it could be a political thing it could be something controversial not sure I'm going to go well I'm going to walk through them well well I don't know yet but we're going to like I'm thinking of it more like top to bottom, left to right, top to bottom. So I don't even know which of that so it is. Yeah, yeah, I think that's how we're gonna do that. So, but we'll count them off and attach numbers to them. I just wanna see if you can find something out there, but, and maybe, I don't know how you find it. The The thing is, it's better, it's best if, if it's something kind of out there in nature 
but you may struggle. But like when, when I read that first one about that, that, uh, the straw man, um, you know, that's so common that you see it all the time. So I immediately thought of just some of the talking heads I see on TV, which I never watch TV. So I don't really, you know, try not to ingest too much of it. Okay. But so let's do this, but, but just try to find a, a, a real example, if at all possible, thank you. Try to find a real example if if there's any way possible to do it, but one with a little bit of sophistication and then be ready to share yours and spend a minute. Because if we actually do, everybody spends a minute, that's the bulk of our time. Um, all right. So right here, so that's your straw man. And number one would be also remember, because when you get down there, you're going to repeat the numbers. So, um, in fact, if we go three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 18, 19, 20, 23. So you're going to also be straw man. No, you're 24. No, no, no. You're straw man. Okay. So that's number one and number one is straw man. The next one, what is that called? No, oh, I didn't want to do that. What's that? I wonder, will it take me to the next one over? No, just like the header up top, but that goes back. Yeah, back out right there. Oh, back there. I see what you're saying. Yeah, and it isn't really in order after all. Okay. So what was this guy again? False cause. So that's number two. So that's you and I guess Brandon, right? Yeah, you're number two. And then... What's that one? Appeal to emotion. So that's number three. What's that? It's for the children. Yeah, Zach. So that would be number three. I was thinking about just winding down the left column. Is that doesn't really matter how we do it. Okay. All right. The fallacy fallacy. That's you. Um, slippery slope. That's a classic. Uh, who's up next? Ad hominem. Yeah, you're going to screw that up. That's just the kind of person you are. Um, what is this one? To coke? That's French. To quoque? I'm not exactly sure what language that is. And I don't know about it. Okay, so who's that one? Right up here? You're to quoque or to coke. I'm not, I'm not actually sure how we say that. Not ad hominem. That one. Okay, next on, next one up. Uh, personal incredulity, special pleading, everybody remembering which one you are, a loaded question. That, that's really more like Obama, Satan, um, burden of proof back here. Uh, next one, ambiguity, you know which one you are. And this is like hurting my neck to do this. The gambler's fallacy. And then bandwagon. That's a good one. The bandwagon. Appeal to authority is you, right? Yeah, yeah. Wait, you in front. Then you are composition division. All right. Uh, no true Scotsman. That's a classic. Um, genetic. Sorry, this is so slow. Black or white. Braden. Begging the question. Uh, you. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Appeal to nature, Pedro. Anecdotal. Uh, let's go to the back. And then uh, the Texas sharpshooter. And then the last one being middle ground. My personal favorite. I'm an independent, so therefore I'm right. Right? Um, that is That actually is my personal favorite. I think the one I probably fall, most fall, fall victim to. Um, okay. So uh, reality is it would be great 
if it had something to do with technology and computers and society, I mean, you would be great is to pick a topic like, um, uh, man, all of a sudden I'm blanking, uh, cancel culture, right? Um, I have, there are arguments for and against cancel culture. Remember later on, we're going to talk about the, there's the Forbes letter. There's, there's the, well, I can't remember. I haven't looked at it for a while, but there were a couple of letters back and forth. You might want to start there. Um, and on the canvas schedule, there's a bunch of um, some citations. Uh, one group argues against cancel culture and the other group argues that it's not really a thing in essence, right? So, so that's one of those areas where, you know, look for like op-ed pieces, opinion pieces, look at, um, you could talk about social media pros and cons. You could talk about, I think cancel culture is loaded, you know, with a lot of that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Really anything that relate that where you can find a real world example. It's ideal if it's not on a site where you went to go research the blah, blah, blah fallacy, but start by going to this site to research a little bit more about what it is, about how it works, what you're looking for, then try to in your mind kind of wrap yourself around that and see if you can't go out and find an, a live example in the real world. Okay. No, on any topic that relates to the class at all. And then, I don't know, we ought to spend at least 10 minutes. I don't know how long it's going to take you to get it, is the thing. What's that? But products can't partake of logical fallacies. It has to be an argument being put forth by somebody. I mean, you understand that these are all arguments that are being made by somebody trying to persuade you to their perspective, trying to you know make a convincing argument. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. Right. We're or like the popcorn that's advertised as whole grain. It's just a little jar of popcorn, whole grain. Which is yeah yeah okay, but it still partakes of the argument made by the marketers to try to persuade you that it's a good thing. So it still is an argument. All right, and I think I don't know how much time do you think we need? Ten minutes? Fifteen?
How's it coming? Um, I need more time. I need a few more minutes. Let's let's get let's get a few. <clears throat> okay, who needs more time? Okay, I'm going to do this. We're going to let's start. And if you need more time, just keep cranking, okay? Ignore everybody and keep working on it. <clears throat> okay. Um, let me... All right, so I think what I'll do is start in a random place. There's my cursor. Start in a random place and then we'll just, does this have arrow control or just keys or just a mouse? Okay. Okay, let's do it. Let's go through these real quick, and we'll just kind of, I mean, if we don't get through all of them, we can continue next time, but um, <clears throat> let's just kind of hit them. I'll kind of, we'll just kind of review it real quickly. Who's got slippery slope? You ready to go? Okay, so um, slippery slope says that you said that if we allow A to happen, then Z will eventually happen too, therefore A should not happen. Um, interestingly, the, what, the biggest problem with slippery slope is that it's actually a judgment, it's a, it's a judgment call. It's sort of subjective, right? Because there are situations where you say, look, if we do this, you know, next thing you know, right? You describe it like that, but it might actually be true. That's the thing, you know, <clears throat> I've had discussions on political issues 
Or I'm just like, no, following that reasoning, if you allow this, then you naturally have to allow that. Allow that. Oh, Chuck, then being accused of a slippery slope. Oh, Chuck, that would never happen. Fast forward 20 years. It's exactly where the thing, whatever it is, right? So, for example, registering guns, you know, if you register a gun pretty soon, that's the next step to confiscation. No one's going to take your guns. These are the arguments, right? Sure. You ready to share your example? And then just be really loud so everybody can hear you, okay? So that is a perfect example of a slippery slope argument. It doesn't, it doesn't speak to, because the nature of a slippery slope doesn't speak to whether in fact, right, there was the defacing of the statue of uh, Cervantes in a park somewhere in the, I don't remember where it was, right? He was not a conquistador. He wrote Don Quixote. <laughs> he was just an author, but, you know, whatever, right? You have, you know what I mean? You have statue of Abraham Lincoln being torn down. I mean, so there's, so the, so we're not, it doesn't really make the argument about whether he was right or wrong in what he said, but it is absolute. When you say, where does this stop? It is an appeal to the slippery slope. Yeah, that's a good one. Very good. Um, and then because of the volume, and like I said, if we do go over and we want to talk for a second and we go, you know, we spill over to next time, I don't care, right? As long as we're having a good time, we're good. Uh, D'Artagnan. No, Devin. <laughs> Oh, of course. That's my whole point. Okay. It's a logical fallacy when there is fact, when there is in fact no connection. Okay. You know, or or when this or when the connection. The problem is that's why I was saying it's subjective. Right. You know what I mean? Um, you know, trying. Let's let's hit a couple real quick. Get yeah, to. Just that uh, I think the, the key there in this particular slide is in the second line there where it's like because no proof. Yeah, where you're not really presenting the proof, right? But usually in an argument, you're trying to get to the point at some level. Yeah, I don't know. Pedro. Emmanuel Kant? Wait, wait, say it again. Interesting. Okay. Fair enough. Let's go. Next one up. No true Scotsman. So who had that one? Are you still working on it? Well, let's, we'll skip. We'll skip and come back. Yeah, yeah, totally fair. Um, begging the question. Who had that one? Who had begging? Are you ready to go? Yeah, I find the following of arguments that are remakes of the whole thing. Okay, let's take a look. <clears throat> you presented a circular argument in which the conclusion was included in the premise. It sort of goes with this idea, you know, no true Scotsman would, you know, thus and such. And then comes this this sort of argument part, but of course, the whole idea, the conclusion was wrapped up in the premise. Um, <clears throat> you, the, you know, this is not a great. Uh, a lot of times, these they just struggle. Like, you know, the word of Zorbo, the great is flawless and perfect. We know this because it says so in the great and infallible book of Zorbo's best and most truest things. Um, that the problem is, it's too flagrant. It's too blatant. Um, so, uh, it arises in situations where people have an assumption that's very ingrained and therefore taken in their minds as a given, 
and then it just gets circular reasoning is bad because mostly because it's not very good that's actually more redundant than circular that's not even good reasoning they're trying to be funny but i don't even think that's good reasoning so what what do you got Yeah. Or or there's a set of features that the iPhone has or that the droids have or that the LG has. And you you already know that this is the one you like because it's the color you like the colors or you like, you know, <clears throat> the form factors. You then create a set of criteria that only one of them are going to satisfy. And that's a form of circular argument. Did you have any other any live examples from <clears throat> out there in the world okay that's cool that's fair no it's okay we're we're just trying to play around with this with this thing um the texas sharpshooter who had that one are you ready to go let's push off and i want to go to specific examples if we can then if we put come back next time we can like wrap up the ones that we didn't, you know, because I want to see some that like out in nature. Otherwise, it's more just rethinking of these, you know. Um, yeah, just give us some thought. Uh, let's keep let's keep going. See if what else we've got. At who had ad, ad hominem? This is should be easy. Do you got a good got any live examples? What's that? Say louder. But do you have any that you can share, though, that you found? Okay. Um, okay, cool. The... Uh, do you have any any others that are like that you found right now looking searching okay that yeah what i want to do is get to like written examples that you can find that you can read to us somebody's that somebody puts forth with a straight face okay not just you know i'm not trying to pick on those that have gone but not just re you know revisiting what it is what some written examples um and we can keep going this way. How about anecdotal? Who had that one? Do you have some examples? What do you got? Okay, right. So this is now this is interesting because it's pretty universal in politics. Right. So you use a personal experience or an isolated example instead of a sound argument. Right. For example, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, well, what normally happens. Yeah, go, Tim. I may have an actual example. Okay. But, so, may, but you might not. I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure. Of, okay. Uh, yeah, go. So, uh, clip where. I forget who the person was, but it was Joe Rogan talking to some alleged COVID-19 expert. Okay. I forget their actual credentials or who they were or whatever, but they, you know, they were having discussion about COVID and vaccinations and whether or not, you know, getting a booster, um, you know, protecting from Delta variant, whether or not the vaccine is effective, yada, yada, yada. And the uh, lady was, you know, giving statistics and everything, and then his counter argument was, yeah, but do you know anybody who, who like the data is not valid if you don't personally know a person. Right. In essence, appealing to anecdotal as the ultimate authority. Yeah. That, 
So would that fall into this one or would that be? I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it would. But here's the one that always hits me. And, and again, everybody on both sides of the aisle does it politically. Um, I think I see it more out of Democrats than Republicans, but everybody does it. Um, but it goes kind of like it goes kind of like this. Um, uh, Mr. President or, or Mr. Senator, uh, what do you think about, you know, the coal mining, you know, the coal industry? Right. I mean, one of the things that one of the things that Mitt Romney got in trouble for was actually talking about Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Now, he actually knows some things about business. But what's interesting is that Chapter 11 bankruptcy, if you understand business, there's a number of things that, that Romney got in trouble for saying that were actually uh, economically and, and business-wise actually true, like, like corporations or people, for example. But in, in my opinion, that was an accurate statement. <clears throat> but it goes... But one of the things that he got in trouble for was like, yeah, maybe the market's trying to teach a company that it should fold. Well, that's not a very smart, that's not a great thing to say if you're trying to be elected to office, right? And then, you know, some years later, Obama said, President Obama said, uh, what did he say? GM is still alive and, and bin Laden is dead, right? They're, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't address the question of whether the economy needed GM to go away because there was a thing that was going to happen that would be far better five years later. It, you know what I mean? It doesn't address that sort of thing. So it becomes kind of an anecdotal point, but it doesn't, and I'm not saying it should have, or that I have no compassion for, you know, uh, auto workers or, you know, because that's the problem. Oh, you just don't care. Then all of a sudden we're back to ad hominem and, you know, things like that. You just don't care about the auto workers. Yeah, that's me. Just Satan. That's me. Let's go all in on ad hominem. But it always goes like, um, what do you think about the auto industry? Well, just last week I was talking to, you know, Madge Cuomo, who is a, a unemployed auto worker. And, um, you know, and then you're going to tell a story, right? And I'm, and I'm always, the story, the story is touching the human interest. So that's good, but not, and then I think that what, what I think from a kind of a logical perspective and kind of a politics perspective, one of the interesting dynamics is that if you live under the philosophy that no bad thing should ever happen to any individual, where's the extent to which government stops trying to do everything? That's my, that's my kind of struggle with the, it, which is also a slippery slope argument, which may or may not be true, right? Anyway, you see a ton of anecdotal um, out of politicians because if they can, because they know <clears throat> that if they can say to you, it's not about whether my economic theory is good or bad. It's that a bad thing happened to somebody and I wanted that bad thing to not happen. And if I'd been the president, that bad thing wouldn't have happened to that one bad to that one person. And one of the things it also never addresses is if there is a policy put in place that would have stopped that person from experiencing a bad thing, what would have been the negative fallout of that thing that you would have done instead that would have stopped that damage but would have caused a bunch of others? Here's an example. Um, I went to, when I go to the movie theater, so I'm six one now and since I discovered I shrunk since spine surgery. Um, so I'm six one. And I've got a bunch of fused vertebrae and back pain. The, the, the ticket dispensers are at this level, which is almost even too low for a wheelchair, frankly. You know, I had this conversation with George, Professor Rudolph, right, who lives in a wheelchair. I'm down there. For me to buy a ticket, I have to do this, you know, to try to read what, I don't know what they did it for, cats, dogs, I'm not sure what the target audience was, people crawling in, army crawl, I don't know what the target audience is. But in other words, you did a good thing to make sure that that two foot tall people in wheelchairs are going to be accommodated. But I'm talking, this thing is extremely low and it doesn't make sense, any sense to me. I don't know who the target demographic is that needs that something that's that close to the ground. Okay, but it creates a painful dynamic for me and makes it difficult for me to buy a ticket. So every, every, every good thing done to alleviate an anecdotal problem, you got, you see what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, okay, let's go. Next one. 
ambiguity use double meaning or ambiguity of language to mislead or represent the truth you got one so what i found is that ambiguity is used a lot in legal matters okay Disney said, what oh. are you based off of box office? And then they released it on Disney Plus and they put it that way. And they're like, well, we didn't mean streaming. Yes, we didn't mean streaming sales box office wise. We meant box office movie. Theater. Right. We didn't need we didn't mean the broad concept of revenue generated by people watching the movie. We just meant this we meant theaters. Right. No, that's actually, that's a great example, I think, of ambiguity. Um, let's keep going. Straw man, who's got that one? You got two of them? Anybody got, you got any live examples? Mine's a little forced, but. <laughs> okay, we'll go first, and then you go second. So, um, the reason I think this forces that, I guess, is I think is that's an argument. Um, but there's just the example. The jets over New York City and um, in honor of the medical workers. Um, and then, let's see, Senator Ocasio Cortez said nothing like a corporate PR campaign to burn a jet to a low altitude in a vulnerable community is dying from a respiratory virus <clears throat> that compounds on our pre existing and disproportionate exposure to air pollution to show healthcare workers we care. The reason why, so I mean, that's rich. I mean, that, that's that's like <laughs> the ontological density is off the charts, right? Uh, okay. So the, the reason why I can kind of see this being a straw man is that it's taking his intents and misrepresenting what he's intending. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if I, um, I don't know. Do you think it's, what do you guys think? Is that forced or is that like dead on in terms of it, what's that? Yeah. Well, and I think it's a little, it's an exaggeration of what actually happened. And in that respect, there's a straw, there are straw man elements to it. It isn't strictly misrepresenting. This really shows up when you misrepresent someone's belief systems, you know? Um, Yeah, yeah, but it certainly it certainly overtakes some exaggeration in terms of making the point. And also, I just got to say, you know, in the political domain, Trump versus AOC is just a cluster F all day long. You know, it feels that's my own. I find them to be the the logical extremes of illogical argument, uh, basically, and therefore they're just loaded, just loaded. So that we'd have to like, can you like just send that to me? <clears throat> it's just so densely loaded with with funky, certainly loaded with emotion, right? It's, well, it's really a, very much the appeal to emotion. Um, what did you have for straw man? From what online? Okay. Interesting, interesting. So is that a straw man or is it? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. It feels, by the way, I'm just intrigued by how often the former president shows up. It's so weird when you talk about logical fallacies. <laughs> Yeah, and I think there's some others that will. And what's the other one? There's there's another one that it actually is reminding me, but I'm I'm drawing a blank on it. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was that one called? The slippery slope. No, no, that's not slippery slope. No, 
No, that Z was the logical extreme. That if you if that if we let this one thing go, it's going to evolve and it's going to become, it's going to it's going to change. I don't know. Actually, if you get if the ones if you have the, that have um, if you could drop these in the Discord chat, the ones that have already gone. Did you have? Did you say? Did you have a comment? Yeah. I can't remember if you had a comment about it. The way you're talking about was the uh, what's like under like composition, like the false equivalency. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, it's more false equivalency. Um, you know, if you this, then you that, which is just not even, yeah. And I, okay, of those of not, who have not gone, how many of them involve President Trump? Because I'd like to maybe just go moratorium, but if you already got one, if you already got one, let's get it out. I just, yeah. It's been a long time since I've read any news articles about any president. Let me just put it that way. So I'm like not up for the uh, for the gag reflex across the board there. Let's keep going. Let's see what we got here. Where's my mouse? Genetic. You judge something either good or bad on the basis of where it comes from or from whom it came. Who had that one? So you got you got a. Oh, okay. So in other words, um, the party is at fault because they accept whatever Trump says. Um, and this is left-leaning CNN making the argument. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, this is the one where I remember my brother, whose politics are quite different from mine, saying, uh, oh, you sound just like so-and-so that I'd never heard of, as if that my ideas are being parroted or echoed by somebody you know and and which is on the other side of his team jersey therefore um you know my idea is bad because somebody else that he disagrees with also believes it maybe that's still kind of equivalency i'm not sure Bryn. there's that part yeah right i mean i think that's an example okay how are we doing here let's keep going Ambiguity. Do we do ambiguity? Are we repeating ourselves? Bandwagon. You appeal to the popularity or the fact that many people do something as an attempted form of validation. Um, what do you think? Who had that one? What did you get? Uh, Man, it's been two years. It's been almost two years. Been living rent-free in everyone's head. Man. No, no, no. Go ahead. So, who's the source? Who's who's speaking? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Election, um, there were you know, the 
And, right, and doesn't most doesn't most um, advertisement, right? Back in the seventies, there was a Chevy ad campaign that went baseball. What was it? Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. <laughs> now that's actually also a bit of a logical stretch. I mean, baseball, sure, maybe hot dogs yeah you know what i mean like everybody loves everybody loves this everybody loves that so you probably ought to also love chevy all the americans do yeah i don't know if it's more the same thing but um during the last election there were a lot well in the election before too there were a lot of really strong good candidates but then there was more or less you know from both ends of the spectrum oh this is like Right. And then a lot of people go, you're wasting your time if you vote for so and so. Oh, you're wasting your vote. Right. You're throwing your yeah. vote. Like I know I did. And so like, <laughs> oh, if, you, if you don't vote for Biden, <clears throat> then you're giving a vote to Trump. Or right. Vice versa, right. Kind of Which is also, I mean, it's also a logical fallacy because that's a false, what is it? Dichotomy. It's a false dichotomy. Right. Because I, I wasn't going to vote for either one of them. Right. You know what I mean? So the notion that, well, by not voting for so-and-so, you know, you're projecting yourself. Like, you know, you would do that, but I wouldn't, I was never going to vote. I was always going to throw my vote away. Right. You know? Right. I'd vote the down ballot, but I was always going to throw my vote away. Someday, if you're nice, I'll tell you who I voted for. <laughs> and I will simply tell you that I voted, I cast the 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 goofiest, most hilarious vote that I could possibly cast. So was it Kanye West on there? Yeah, he tried. It was Kanye. I voted for. I voted for. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with politics. It was just I wanted a candidate who was stronger, faster. Physically. No. 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 You kidding? No, it was about what's that song? Stronger, faster? Oh, da da no, but it was the Kanye version. Kanye did that song. It's called Stronger. Yeah, I wanted the candidate. Anyway, the moment's gone, but. <clears throat> no, I, I was literally going through it with my buddy, and I'm just like looking. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? I, I, got, I got to throw my vote away. I'm just like, Conway, Kanye freaking West is on the ballot in Utah. I knew at that moment what I had to do. You know, it was the funniest vote I could possibly cast. And that's why I did it. So there you go. That's, that's, uh, I've, I've fessed up now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hit, throw it down. Right, right. That, no, therefore, that's the, the right thing to do. Yeah. All right. Okay, bandwagon, we're going random. Did we do appeal to authority yet? Who has it? You got something for us? Like it increased itself and then way up, and then he just then he started stepping bitcoin for Tesla, and he just like this and then he just popped it off. Okay. Basically, so you see this sway in the market that he keeps voting, but I can't find actual like articles that do this. Okay, let me let me throw a couple at you. Um, four out of five dentists surveyed, and I always want to know who's the one out of five that's like Crest. Are you kidding me? Twenty percent of dentists. Are like crest? No, I'm gonna hard pass. Right? Eighty percent of dentists. That's proof to authority. That's an appeal to authority. And how about this one? The you know we we go into the 
to the the kind of stuff that gets you fired. Um, 97% of all climate scientists agree. Now, I'm not, that has no bearing whatsoever on the legitimacy of the scientific arguments. It's simply an appeal. It's an appeal to authority, right? To a certain group. There was also an appeal to authority before the, there was a time when, when it was not reasonable because of funding from the tobacco industry to publish papers um, that would find that tobacco was causing cancer and stuff at a time when there was probably a very significant majority. And the point is, and that was bad science, but it was the scientists because science and money are inextricably tied. So an appeal to that kind of authority, you know, it, it and to me, it just has no persuasive power. I already understand what science is and I already mostly believe it. <laughs> I mostly tag along when scientists say what their expertise is, but that appeal also based, by the way, on a paper which I have read and which is a bad empirical paper, citing where the where the consensus comes from. I'm just saying that argument by itself is a proof to by authority and doesn't in and of itself make the argument, which may still be true or false. It just doesn't say anything, and hence the fallacy. So the question that I have is where do we draw the line in terms of like credentials and stuff? Because you know, when you're presenting an argument. Research or anything like that, it's like it's a PhD. I have this. I have this. I yeah. Have this. So we're gonna be drawing the line between appealing to authority and just having. So basically, I feel like we're appealing to authority by getting all. The <clears throat> well, because there, stuff. there's a okay, but here's the difference. There is an appeal to authority as a logical fallacy, as a persuasive argument, and there is also a reliance upon authority, which is the right thing to do under certain circumstances. Does that make sense? There's a difference. If I'm appealing to authority, I'm just saying, oh, so you're smarter than, than the, than the doctors, you, you know, that's an appeal to say, cause I'm trying to be persuasive. If I, the reason I go to doctors <laughs> for medical care is because I actually, not because of the authority, I used to walk around my household periodically saying to my children when they would badmouth me, I would just say, back off. I'm a doctor. You know, I know. What I do. Trust me, I'm a doctor. You know, as a joke, because it has no bearing on the rightness or wrongness of what the, of what the thing was. It's more that you appeal to it to make your argument for you instead of making the actual argument on, on the merits of the argument. And once again, you can appeal in every one of the logical fallacies, your argument might be true or might be false, but the approach is fallacious. Devin, I'm gonna come over here. But that's reliance on authority as a reasonable life choice that doesn't make an argument that's persuasive. Right. Um, yeah. 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 Fair enough. Um, I feel like appeal to authority also kind of leans on level of like it. It spawns from a level of trust you have with particular authority because you trust doctors, therefore you take their particular word as gospel to share with someone to convince someone else because you trust someone. Right. So you're sharing that trust with someone else. It's not persuasive to somebody who doesn't trust medical doctors in general or whatever. Yeah. And in yeah. essence, I think of appeal to authority is I think about like when we're younger as kids and my dad said that the, the wind is caused by tree sneezing. And my, it's true because my dad said so. Right, right. Did that actually happen to you? No. Okay, just, just checking. 
Okay, let's keep going. We've got uh, just a couple more minutes. Who has black and white? Okay, Braden, what does your uh, what does your quote say? Well, there's more nuance, right? A lot of times, uh, one thing that we're not necessarily to say there's just the tide or here the other quick. And my two examples are Stop and Chris, who would say, if they have nothing to hide, they shouldn't be worried. But that's just, that's not true. They could have other, <coughs> there are other like, issues that come up because of that, that policy. And the second one was um, Phil Sobriety, and I actually shared it. But uh, basically, oh, I'm not drunk, so I can take a pill of sobriety test, I'll pass it. But so many people fail this all the time. Because, like, if I'm complete opposite of things that you are Right, then you've got, you've got confirmation bias, you've got nervousness. Some of us don't walk as straight as we used to. I'm saying, if I'm not doing anything wrong, it's okay. But yeah. that's not necessarily something that I consider in the first place. You could still be called out. Yeah. Yeah, and that's interesting because some of that, and, and there's a lot of these, and I hope if, if you wouldn't mind, you know, dropping these on the Discord chat so I can maybe take a look at them. Um, because sometimes there's other fallacies that are more prevalent, you know, in in terms of what's going on. Um, but let me see. Well, how about, how about this? Let's go slogans. America, love it or leave it. Yeah, that's another right. I mean, that's, that's black and white, right? America. Yeah, if you don't love America, then what are you doing here? Loving America, by the way, is going to be defined as voting Republican or voting Democrat, depending upon who's making the statement, right? And then the choice is going to be given as, you know, and the one choice is going to be an absurd choice, and the other choice is going to be, you know, the correct choice. That, that Actually, America, love it or leave it, probably partakes of about half of these in very few words. Pedro. Right. So since you live in America, you there's nothing to complain about. That's the black. That's the black or white fallacy. Right. Right, exactly. No, that's right. It, 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 it leads to like take instead of a, being able to have a nuance, like, for example, if you believe that, you know, let's take something controversial from 2020, like all lives matter. If yeah, you believe that it means that you are a racist, you know, that your your options are, you know, and it's every single group has its own virtue signaling. Right. And if you don't virtue signal with your chosen group, then you're a cast out and you're in this black and white scenario. And the virtue signal is to do whatever the group demands that you do. And I just sort of resist that no matter what the group is, no matter what the logic is. Um, I just would rather say what I have to say in a nuanced way, right? That you can believe this and also believe that. And I can hold multiple thoughts in my head at the same time. Crazy, crazy. Right. And only cis deal in absolutes. Okay, let's do one more. Composition division. Um, you assume that one part of something has to be applied to all or other parts of it, that the whole must apply to its parts. Who had that one? What do you got? Okay. Just because society is a bunch of individuals, uh, like the law doesn't necessarily. Yeah. All right. I hope. Was this interesting? I hope. I hope. And how many didn't go? <laughs> Half. Let's do some more. Let's just do some more next time. 
um, on Tuesday. I, I have a few more writing things I want to talk about. Um, but what we'll do is we'll add an assignment where like a current event where you need to find a, an article that, that you didn't write, you know, that, that I didn't assign or whatever, and then find an article that, that partakes of the logical fallacy and then, you know, cite to your article and pull quotes out of it and make the argument about how it's, how it's fallacious. Brennan. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that really means is that it's, yeah, it's that's ballpark enough. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, within five years-ish, as long as it's, you know, feels current, I don't care. That's right. You are not current.